Welcome to the Knits in the Wild podcast. My name is Jen and I'm coming to you from the capital region of upstate New York where I live with my husband Jordan and our two cats Cedric and Phoebe. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining me today and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is episode number eight of my knitting podcast. Um, I originally wasn't going to record today because I didn't think I had enough um, things to share, but then I went through some of my finished objects and I finished a couple things this morning. So, so first and foremost, let's start with um, what I'm wearing. This is my finished Muscleboro hat. Muscleburg, Muscleboro, not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced, but this is my finished pink Muscleburg hat. Um, the pattern is by Yasolda Teague, I believe. Um, I have, I wanted this hat to be done because I wanted to be able to wear it because we only have probably about a month or so left of like cooler weather. And I figured it would be perfect for spring because it's bright pink. And this hat, I'll just take it off really quick, but it is knit in a tube. And you just fold it in on itself um, to get this double layer fabric that I think is just like brilliant. Um, you just fold it in like this. And this hat hasn't been blocked yet. As you can see, it's still kind of, um, it doesn't look so complete, but um, you can also fold it fold the brim up like this and wear it like that which i really like too this is my first time knitting a fingering weight hat so it took a while um i was just really i really wanted it done so i really worked on it a lot the past couple days but um yeah i really like it i'm very happy with it i love the color it's really bright. It is knit with um, Kelborn Woolens um, Perennial Base, which is a Merino and Surrey um, yarn. So I really like this. Um, a lot of people are knitting this hat. <laughs> it's very, very popular pattern, but I like it a lot. Okay, so I do have another finished object to share. Um, so I made, I shared last time that I made, I was working on a shawl for the DRK March to May knit along. And I finished it last weekend. So my Moon Whistle shawl is complete and it's massive. Look at that. And um, I just love how it turned out. <laughs> I... You can, I, it's big enough to where I can like wrap it around like this and wear it like your traditional shawl. But I typically wear my shawls like this. So it is like super cozy and soft and squishy. So this shawl, let me just grab my notes. So this shawl, I think not many, I haven't really seen many people make this shawl. I feel like it's one of Andrea Maury's like underrated shawl patterns. It is really a nice, relaxing, easy knit. Um, and because it's worsted weight, it really goes fast. So this is knit from Feederbrook Farms Entropy DK, which is the pink and purple color shifting yarn, which I've talked about before in the colorway Symbiosis. And the solid blue here, slate is slate blue in the same um, Feederbrook Farms solid DK. And the background color, the main color, this like, taupey color here with the pink speckles. That is Birch Hollow Fibers um, Octavia Worsted in the colorway Ode. So 
all from stash. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making this shawl. Almost like I would consider making it again. <laughs> so I did have to add two more repeats of the um, stitch patterns here, this stripe and this tweed pattern, just to get it to be as long as I wanted it because my row gauge is always shorter than what is called for in the pattern. So yeah, that's my moon whistle shawl. So I'm gonna take that off because I'll die because it's warm. Okay. Next up, I have a swatch to share. So I mentioned last episode that I was going to start working on a cardigan and I made the swatch. So this is for the warmth cardigan by Kate Oates, which is a drop shoulder open cardigan that is knit with a worsted weight yarn. And I've never knit drop shoulder before. This is a style that I like, so I want one in my wardrobe and I want a dark um, gray just so it matches a lot of things and I can wear it to work, that kind of thing. So I looked at the recommended yarn and I <laughs> really wanted to order some Lobby in a May, but I put it in my cart and saw the price and I was like, I just can't. <laughs> this is too expensive. It was just too much money and I'm sure the yarn is beautiful like I would love to be able to knit with that but I just couldn't bring myself to spend that much on yarn because for cardigan for myself I would probably need like five skeins or more of that and that would just it adds up so fast and I, t I typically order from websites that have discounts for sweater quantities and I went back to, I was on Wool and Company's website, which is, I order from them pretty frequently because they have that discount and they have free shipping. So I looked through their other options for worsted weight wool yarn, and I ended up get going with um, Cascade because it's budget friendly and they come in so many beautiful colors. And I just picked this dark gray, the colorway I believe is called Grease, G-R-I-S or Grizz, I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, this will be definite, will be suitable for this cardigan. And it, the swatch is so soft, it's, it's really nice yarn. It's not boutique, it's not hand dyed, but it's affordable. So I could get a sweater's quantity for, I mean, I forget exactly how much I paid. I would have to uh, look it up. Actually, let me pause and look it up so I can tell you. <laughs> so, okay. Cascade 220. This is not the superwash. This is just the regular 100% Peruvian wool. And it. I ordered seven of them for this cardigan. The price was $11 a skein for 220 yards and... $77 total, where if I had bought the other yarn, it would have been <laughs> probably $250 or more for the amount that I needed. So I chose the budget friendly route. Um, and this yarn is beautiful. So that is for my warmth cardigan, which I'm not sure exactly when I will be starting because I have a couple other projects that I need to get done first so okay another I have another project on the needles that I actually started yesterday or Friday now I can't remember but I if you have seen you probably saw Andrea Mowry has another cowl pattern that just came out the other day called the DRK everyday cowl so I immediately purchased that with the subscriber or her newsletter subscriber discount and I um, started a cowl for my husband's friend who the last time we hiked together, I, he said he saw my night shift cowl and he was like, hey, can you make me one of those but in camo colors? 
Um, and I was like, oh, sure. I bet I could find some really fun camo colored hand dyed yarn. Like I love looking for yarn for different types of projects. So this is right up my alley. And I found this. So I bought two skeins of this hand dyed camo colored yarn. And it is from Color Fusion Fibers. I found it on Etsy. They only had two skeins of this camo. And so I both bought them both and they're fingering weight, 100% super wash and nylon. So it's basically sock yarn, fingering weight. So I started her pattern and the pattern seems like it's unisex. So in this camo color, it looks pretty masculine. Uh, I, I didn't look through all the projects yet to see if I could see what it looked like on a man, but I think it's going to look okay. Um, it's, I'll throw a photo up of the shawl, but it has these slip stitches and a garter background and it looks really cozy and warm. I think I'm going to make the medium size because I want it to be kind of like very low profile for him to wear while he's outdoors. Not like, I don't want it to look like a fashion cowl obviously because it's for a guy but not that there's anything wrong with that but it's not it wouldn't be his style so I, I showed him yesterday the start of this and I was like asking him if he liked how it was looking and he was really happy with it so I wanted to just make sure he liked it before I went any further <laughs> and made the whole thing so I'm hoping to have enough yarn left to make one for my husband as well but We'll see, we'll see. So this is the DRK Everyday Cowl. And I have a feeling that's gonna go pretty quickly. I wanna get it to him before the colder weather is gone. I'm also working on a test knit that I am not gonna share because I don't, it's not a secret, I don't think, but I don't really wanna share it yet because it hasn't been released. It's another cowl by Caitlin Hunter called the Homer Cowl and it, is a color work bandana style cowl. So I started that and the recommended yarn for that was Lobby Anime, which I didn't buy, but I had some worsted weight knit picks yarn in my stash with some leftover spin cycle yarns from my throwover sweater. So I used those together and that is coming out pretty good. It's a fun pattern. It's I'm not thrilled with the colors I picked because I was trying to use up some stash and two of the colors I don't think look that great together. I'm undecided if I'm going to rip it out and start over, start that section over with a different color. I'm not sure if I'll have enough time because I think it had like a two week turnaround and it's already been over a week. So I'm worried that I won't finish it in time, but I can't wait to share that with you when it is released. Okay, so acquisitions. I wanted to share, so this is mostly, there's some yarn, but um, I just ordered a spinner's control card from Etsy with a little moth on it. And this is just a card that has, um, it, you wrap your finished yarn around here and it tells you how many wraps you get per inch. It's got a twist angle measurement and it's got this chart here where you can like hold your finished yarn and like it'll tell you what weight it is, which is really handy, especially for me since I'm a new spinner. It's got this really pretty moth on there. And they also sent me some stitch markers with that, which I thought was so sweet. Um, yeah, so these cute wooden stitch markers and there's a little moth and a moon for the lunar moth and it's by sunrise grove knittery and these you can find on etsy so cute so that'll go in my spinning bag uh i also ordered this was kind of an impulse but i purchased two skeins of this yarn it's called Making Tracks, and it's 100% American Wool by Junction Fiber Mill, which I just happened to see them 
I follow the Wooly Thistle on Instagram, which is a yarn shop in New Hampshire. And they posted something about Junction Fiber Mill's uh, yarn that they carry. And Junction Fiber Mill is a mill in J White River Junction, Vermont, which is up in northern Vermont on the, like we, my husband and I go up to Vermont a lot and we drive from here to the Northeast Kingdom, which is way up north in Vermont for mountain biking. Cause there's a lot of really good mountain biking trails up there in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, and we sometimes stop in White River Junction to get food on the way there, but we always drive through there. And I saw that they had yarn from the mill from there. So I had to buy it, of course. And a, they have a YouTube channel, which I, I found out about. And um, I need to watch the videos. I haven't yet. But one of the reasons I ordered them is because they are from Vermont. And it, on the label it says, Proudly made in White River Junction, Vermont, Junction Fiber Mill is a small batch wool processing mill in the heart of White River Junction. Started by two sheep farmers' friends, Amanda and Peggy, established in 2001. So... This is just lovely um, color shifting yarn in this very light um, pink, pinks and blues and corals. It is just beautiful. And the fact that it's called making tracks, <laughs> which reminds me of skiing. So if you're a skier, you know. But um, yeah, I'm excited to use this in a special project. I don't have anything planned for it yet. Speaking of Vermont, I have another acquisition from Wing and a Prayer Farm, which is, I forget exactly where in Vermont it's located. I think it's closer to us in southern Vermont, but I saw that they, they have so, they have such beautiful yarn in their shop. I just wanted to buy all of it, but it's really expensive. Um, and I've been really wanting to knit with Cormo yarn. I've heard such good things about it. And they have some beautiful Cormo yarn in their shop. And I didn't have a project in mind and it was so expensive. So I didn't end up buying the yarn, but I did buy the roving. They had four ounce bumps of roving, of Cormo roving in the shop. And look at this, I cannot wait to spin this and honestly I'm kind of afraid because I don't want to screw it up because it was it was a little pricey but I have been really into trying different breeds to see what I like the most and I've heard good things about Cormo and that it's a very nice bouncy yarn very soft next to skin and I believe Cormo is a mix of um, Corydale and Merino. Um, yeah. They were bred Corydale rams to Merino ewes. And that's how Cormo was developed. But I looked up, looked it up in my spinning Bible. I'm excited about that. Definitely check out their farm store on their website if you want some beautiful, um, beautiful yarns that are naturally dyed. Uh, okay. More acquisitions. So, I know I talked about in a couple episodes ago, or maybe it was last episode, I don't remember, um, my plans for my Vertices Unite shawl which is a Stephen West shawl that I'm planning to make. And I had a palette of colors that I wasn't really sure about. And I just, something just wasn't right with them. I wasn't really feeling the colors I picked. So I ordered some more fingering weight yarn just to see if I liked anything better. So I, these are the two new colors that I picked. So I've been really loving these this these color this color combination um, these do not have color names on the tags 
but it is Cascade Heritage, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon fingering. And it's very soft. So I was thinking that to make a springy shawl and then the dark. So I think that these will look better. Yeah. There we go. It's kind of hard to hold five skeins of yarn. <laughs> but yeah, this is my plan for the Vertices Unite shawl, which will be a spring knit for me as soon as I start it, which who knows when. Okay, let's chat about spinning. I love spinning. <laughs> my husband is now teasing me because I have all these skeins of yarn and I have not made anything with them. So yeah, there's that. But I find I really like the process of spinning hand dyed comb top just to figure out kind of like when you're knitting with color changing yarn, it's very addictive because you want to see how it's going to turn out. The same goes for spinning with fractals. So I love playing with the color and seeing how it's going to come out and how it's going to look in a finished yarn. And I showed you guys last time the Nest Fiber Club's February Club Fiber called Cabin Fever, which I finished last weekend. This is washed and skeined up and it came out lovely. And this is 100% BFL. And obviously there's some thick and thin, some more un underspun parts, but overall I think the consistency is getting better. Yeah, so I'm happy with it. Now I just gotta figure out projects for it. <laughs> and then I purchased um, some Hello Yarn fiber, dyed fiber from Hello Yarn and I bought, it's 100% Cheviot in the colorway Up in the Sky, which is this dark, moody, beautiful, um, beautiful color. And this, oh, I love it so much. And this came out a little bulkier and I left the settings the same on my wheel I used the smaller whirl and it came out a little thicker. I think it was just like the nature of the fiber because it really wanted to spin thick and it was really sticky and like really toothy, I guess I could, I guess I want is what I want to say. It was my first time spinning with the Cheviot, which I did enjoy it. My, I still need to figure out how to spin a thinner yarn because parts of these I think are thinner. Overall, I think it's about a worsted, like a heavier worsted weight, or Aaron. I gotta check with my tool here. I have the tool, so let's check. If I can find a little piece that's sticking out. Let's just look at this. Let's just enjoy this. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so the thinking is you wrap, actually, let's just check with this. So this piece looks to be a DK. Actually, it's smaller than a worsted, but it matches with the DK. Like, let me see if I can show you. Let's see? I don't know. What do you think? It's a worsted. Yeah. Oh, I did want to talk about my horrific experience spinning I shouldn't say spinning, I should say plying merino. So <clears throat> I shared before that I have 
this bump of merino that I got at Cece's. And it's this beautiful, tweedy merino that is called seashell. And it's so pretty. And I spun that up into this light single, which the single looks pretty good, I think. Except, look, there's a huge knot. So I took this off the bobbin because I wanted to spin it or I wanted to ply it from a center pole ball. And that was a mistake apparently because I made it this far. I made it this far, if you can see. And then I got a huge knot from the center here. And there was, I don't know how to fix this without cutting it. And that will just screw the whole thing up. So I don't know. This is just sitting here waiting for me to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with it. Because I don't know. Any suggestions about that would be appreciated. I don't know if it's just doomed. But um, yeah, if so, that's kind of sad. But I still have a whole other bump to try again with that. But it's low on my priority because the first time got so screwed up so so that is all I have to share today thank you so much for joining me I hope everyone's having a fantastic spring thus far I know this week is the first this past week was the first week of spring here and um, yesterday's weather was kind of cold and crappy didn't get to go do anything fun outside but um, I got a lot of spinning done and knitting done so that was good um today the weather seems nicer it's warmer so i might try to get outside and do something but i hope everyone has a fantastic day enjoy the rest of your weekend and thank you so much for joining me um don't forget um all the links all everything i talked about today is in the description below as well as where to find me on social media. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Jen May Knits underscore in the wild. You can find me um, on Ravelry, Ravelry at Jen May. And all my other, um, everything else is in the description. So thank you again for joining me. Um, have a good one. Bye.